This is John Williams and I'm gonna kick his ass today. Okay, that's a joke. I love John Williams. But there's more great music other than Star Wars, Harry Potter and Indiana Jones. In this video, I'm going to show you the most incredible music pieces in film and series that I've found over the last 10 years that most people have never listened to. Let's start with the first one. I watched this movie quite recently and loved every second of it. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Ethan Hunt is such a great main character. He's like the better version of James Bond. And over the last few Mission Impossible movies, Tom Cruise and his team have acquired a lot of knowledge about how to make a chase scene sound amazing. From Dead Reckoning Part 1, Chasing Grace. In one word, epic. I'm gonna let you listen to the music and after that I explain what makes this scene so powerful. The whole piece is in C minor and that is very traditionally written. The composer alone Buffalo uses a lot of medium harmonies. This means he often jumps around in thirds. For example, one of the themes is C minor, G sharp minor, E major. So again a third down. And again a third down to C sharp minor. E major and C minor very often get a some suspension, like an augmented fourth or a ninth. Then he basically repeats the same pattern, or let's say a similar pattern a few times. When he ends up on C minor at the bottom, instead of going back to C major immediately, he goes up to E major again. Then back to G minor. Then he goes to A major and then jumps up Triton to E flat major. What a powerful chord combination. He plays a bit with this relationship between A major and E flat major and at the end he ends up in C minor again. If we look at the piece on a macro, the tension goes up pretty much consistently. After the first climax, it dips down a bit and then rises again with the modulation to A major or E flat major. What is Definitely typical for this piece are the huge jumps in the melody, huge intervals. That's an octave. And also the other part, seventh. And here also a seventh. Now imagine Venice, Italy, something terrible happened, very similar to Chasing Grace, but in a soft manner. I absolutely love those pieces. I think they are just incredible. Normally you don't remember the music in movies. But with those, I knew instantly while watching the movie that I would remember them. The second movie score I want to talk about is from The Hunger Games. Yes, The Hunger Games. If you don't know the movie, here's a very short summary, no spoilers ahead. Because the capital has to keep 12 districts, parts of the country, under control, they have yearly Hunger Games where they put one female and one male person from every district in an area and let them kill each other until there's just one person left. So pretty horrible, sad and basically hopeless. And the music obviously resembles this. The composer James Newton Howard worked on other major movies way before. For example, he wrote the music for the first two Batman movies with Christian Bale together with legend Hans Zimmer. It's actually super simple but very effective. In the scene, BT, a physicist explains that every system has a flaw, like the electronic shield they were looking at. In the music, there's a chord in the background, it's some kind of synth, voice, choir, or maybe an extra choir, I don't know. And the chord changes from major to minor all the time. On top, the violin sounds like it's playing in an Hungarian scale because you can hear the F sharp and the B flat all the time, the augmented third, 
but it's probably just G minor. I do get a feeling of intrigue here, but also tribalism and a deep sense of connectedness with nature. In general, the Hunger Games score has a lot of folkloric elements, for example two string instruments. You could imagine them playing it in the districts themselves. There's another piece I want to show you from the Hunger Games series. Are you, are you coming to the tree? They strung up a man, they say the word of three. Strange things have happened to you, strange world. The Hanging Tree has 161 million views on Spotify and on YouTube over 45 million. Compare that to the Star Wars main theme which just has 9 million on Spotify. That's insane. Why did it work? Here's my guess. There are two reasons. First of all, it nails the atmosphere, the vibe of the movie. The second reason, the orchestration is pretty amazing. In the beginning, which you haven't heard right now, we also had these violins, often standing on fifth, which is also very typical of folkloric music. They also don't play vibrato. The choir is unisonous, even if they are singing in different octave. It's like the crowd, the population of the districts that gather together to fight against the oppressive capital. And I guess that unity really resonated with people. The Hateful Eight is a nasty movie. The humor is dark, the language dirty, and the behavior of the main characters strikes violence. A classic Tarantino. Here are some impressions of the music. The beginning sounds like the first symphony of Gustav Mahler. You have the same note in many octaves, plus this rhythmic drum. Then the bassoon or contrabassoon comes in with this ominous dark melody. You can already hear that something bad is going to happen. Why is it so dramatic? Law instruments play chromatic in syncopes, always up against this trumpet that plays on the beat but plays a slightly atonal, jumpy melody. I don't know how else to call this. The rest, if I had to guess, is just a minor chord. Also from The Hateful Eight. A perfect copy of the overture of Wagner's Hollander. The melody in the violins, the chromatic in the horns against the chromatic in the low strings. I'm pretty sure Marie Kuhn was influenced by the Hollander from Wagner. At least he knew the overture as someone who used to compose for an opera house. The Mandalorian is a TV series based in the Star Wars universe. Its huge popularity is to thank the moral compass that guides an assassin not to kill his target. In a previous video, in which I tried to compose like Hans Zimmer, I tried to make the point that music sets the tone, it influences what you feel, what you see, and the whole vibe of the movie more than anything else. The intro of the Mandalorian is quite fascinating because it's not at all what you would expect from a series like that. Its earthy woodwind sounds give the show a certain depth and it already implies the mental struggle in terms of morals the main character faces. Also it resembles the calmness of the assassin, the sheer groundedness with his environment and the earth. The next film I want to talk about won the Oscar for original score and it's well deserved in my opinion. What made the score so scary were the many drone sound effects that you would expect in a Hans Zimmer movie about spaceflight, but not in a World War I scenario in 1914. But I don't want to show you the drone sounds today.
strings, a cembalo and an accordion if I had to guess. Such a weird combination and extremely sad. It makes you question the one thing you need to keep on living. Hope.